Welcome to DPV. I'm Alex. Today I'm working on my 1977 Lincoln LTD wagon. Um, as you may remember on the last underpower tour, blew a head gasket, driver's side. So I need to replace the head gaskets. And while I'm there, I'm going to change my intake. I got an aluminum intake. I also got a new water pump because I believe that was the reason for my overheating was I wasn't circulating water. I'm also going to get my um, radiator cleaned and pressure tested. So today, I got two days to do this, which is actually tomorrow and the next day. So today I'm just going to try to get this torn down a little bit, see where I can get to, try to get the radiator out here, get some fluids drained. Yeah, let's see where I get to. Are foam earplugs you can um, squish them down and just jam them into your like your transmission line so you don't anything that's like just low pressure that's just gonna just drip 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 you don't want it to keep dripping and lose some fluid it is kind of nice that you can kind of control where it goes so yeah just some cheap foam earplugs will uh, plug your uh, transmission lines I think I'll pull the fan off I pull power steering I don't think I'm gonna put the AC back on Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There we go. some trouble getting the intake off last night and didn't want to pop off uh, soaked both rails on both sides from the uh, intake to the head with some uh, liquid wrench now I'm gonna take a putty knife here try to get the pot there I think it moved here but yeah it moved there okay oh there it goes whoo and it's heavy. How am I gonna do this? This engine bay is huge. I don't have Josh's great big gorilla grabbers. Yeah, I need wider jaws. These Nip X's are awesome channel locks, and they have a really narrow jaw for getting in tight places. But I need a wide jaw to grab that. All right, so these clips like that. So the bull nose cutters, I like using these on these style clips because they it grabs it and then it doesn't slip off of there. Let me see, I don't know if I can show that very well. So because of that, those just clip on either side of that. And then that doesn't like pop off when you're trying to when you're wiggling it back and forth because usually it's stuck to the rubber hose. So when you're wiggling that back and forth, it doesn't you don't those little tabs don't pop off from your pliers, so I like using those bull nose. I feel like get in the engine bay to do this. All right, this is gonna be interesting. Woo, bet it. To do some sketchy Do da, do da. Oh, I get away with it. Let me not put that emblem right in my butt. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Oh. 
There she is. I took a box, front, labeled it, one through eight. So this is like the orientation of the uh, rockers and push rods coming off the engine. I even left top being pointed up on the push rods. So then we pulled the uh, driver's side and um, put them there. Everything in here looks pretty good. A little bit of a carbon buildup right there at the top from the from the rings, but overall I think it's I think we're gonna run her. I got it all out. All right, so heads are off. Got to clean up the mating surface. Get yourself a little razor blade holder and just start slowly going over everything. Scotch Bright works really good too. You can come in. I like to use a mouth sander. You don't want to take off any metal, but these really don't. These don't take off metal. But if you get yourself the mouse sander with the Velcro, that stays on there pretty good. So those mating surfaces are all cleaned up on the block. I scraped the gasket off of here, cleaned up the block side and the intake side. This is what it kind of started looking like. I'm gonna clean up this one now. I'm gonna parts wash the heads to get rid of all the gasket material and stuff that I had turned into dust. Clean everything up, and then uh, I think we're going back together. All right, day two and a half, kinda. First day, I don't really count. Day two, um, assembly day. I've uh, prepped all my machine surfaces. One thing I have left to do is um, these were emissioned heads. And so there's this like airport right here. There was an air pump from the block that pumped air back to this like crossover piece. I think I threw it away. Uh, and then, and it pumped head, it pumped air through here and then it, it came out these little inside the head, inside the exhaust ports, air, got pumped out and it like helped with emissions to clean up your exhaust anyways it's kind of a pain in the butt to put the heads on with those parts on they don't really help i have already removed my air pump so they're not doing anything so i went to napa got some 5 8 freeze plugs and i'm going to put them in Oh yeah, that's what these look like. That's what the old ones look like. Like I said, the same. Prepping the head gaskets with some K&W copper compound. Normally, I use the aerosol, Napa was out, and I can't find mine. So I went and bought some because I know when I go to put this away, I'll definitely find what I was looking for before, so. Pity the poor bastard that replaces these. What do you mean? Well, this kind of stuff makes for good head gaskets. Yeah, but makes it for the next guy to take them off. Off camera, I also cleaned up all the threads on the head bolts. Just ran a um, thread chaser down all of them. Yeah. 
So heater core extremely close to the big to the engine because 460 big block. So the old man's got an idea. We're gonna watch magic, I guess. It's really close. There, there you go. go. Now what bolt? No. That one's got the... And now here's the trick. Okay. You're gonna lift that end of the head up and slide it up and it won't hurt the gasket because it's sitting on that pipe. And you slide that in where you want it back down and you don't have to try to sweet oh. huh yeah that works hope you guys saw that my fat arm wasn't in the way but if you bolt the drop a bolt in the one that has the alignment pipe you can pick your head up and the gasket will stay down because of the adhesive of the copper coat and it's stuck on the and it's stuck on pipe. that alignment now the head will be held up off your gasket so it won't damage it because it's sitting on the alignment pipe. Okay. So sweet. Yeah. So you can pull one motor mount and then use a scissor jack to get your block turned just enough so you can clear the uh, heater core so you don't have to pull your heater core to torque your last bolt. When you're putting those rock arms back on, you want to make sure that that, um, that little machine spot sits down in that groove. That machine bolt, that square right there, sits down in that notch right there. And then your, your push rod will be into that uh, recessed area on the rocker and make sure that your push rod is on the center of your lifters. So got all of them on the center of the lifters. I never, I didn't even pull a lifter to check, but the cam looks good, doesn't have wear through these inspection holes here at the top. And um, there's no grooves or anything on it, on the ones I can feel. So, yeah, so that's on. Let's uh, torque those down. And I go back and just physically feel and make sure they're not bound up. So your in pieces put a light bead of RTV on there and then they're pinned and the pins go in those little holes. Drop on and it drops straight on these four here. The valve cover has these little like the gasket has these little wings on them that clip into the gas into the cover. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but hopefully this will just something will just stay where it's supposed to.
Yeah. Probably should have clean, could have cleaned up the outside of these valve covers, but like I said, gonna be in here again. Seems like a lot for just a water pump. Now it's gonna slide in. Be a pain in the butt. Hey, look at there. All the bolts back in the right spot. Hey, hey, hey. I can't remember. How's this supposed to come apart? I can't remember. I probably should go back and watch the video. But... The water pump came with uh, horsepower. So my radiator ended up having a leak right here. And an exact replacement would have been like 600 bucks. I found a uh, aluminum one for a couple hundred bucks off of that and um, the only difference is is the uh, outlet size and this is a radiator for a lincoln uh, and so i ordered a lower radiator hose for a lincoln so it'll have instead of being i believe this is an inch and a quarter and this one is an inch and a half and then it's just like an inch narrower but this was a two core brass and i'm putting in a three quarter aluminum and so the minuscule amount of reduced surface area i'm not really worried about so I'm gonna need to mock up my uh, fan shroud onto there, and then, but first I'm gonna pull these uh, uh, transmission coolant line fittings, put them in there. Another thing you could do if a guy was worried about it not being enough cooling is to run an external transmission cooler so you weren't utilizing any of your cooling on your transmission, so. All right, let's pull those fittings off. Sweet, that's gonna have So the clips that used to hold the fan shroud in, it held it in with these like self-tapping sheet metal screws, they went through to one of these little clips. Kind of hate these clips. But the old radiator was thin and this is too thick for this. So I just went ahead and drilled it out. And then I, of course I don't have any short bolts. So we're just gonna use a long one. Might end up doing that on the bottom too because the bottom is supposed to be held in with some sort of clip as well. Like a glove. There you go. Perfect. All right. Well, my battery died, so I got a new battery. But what we're gonna do? So pulled the uh, valve covers. Made sure I was at top dead center. Then I pulled the spark plug and double checked. Set my static timing to close to zero. Spun this till it dropped in. I kind of used the dirt marks from to see where the hole where it would get held in at. Uh, top did or number one is right there, so I'm real close there. Looks good to me. I need to find my wrench. Perfect. Okay, uh, so last time I uh, messed up one of my wires because I didn't have dielectric grease. So I'm not gonna make, uh, put this valve cover back on. Big fan of just really filling it in.
Yeah, see, down. Oh, you're 180 out. What had happened was, actually was. It's right now. Now it's correct. And when you showed up the first time, it was also correct. But we don't have any video evidence that we've changed it twice. Yeah, we do. Son of a bitch. All right, all right, just a second. Okay. <laughs> Need to turn that throttle up a little bit. Okay, what do you need for a uh, screwdriver? Tool. Put the key out for you. Sounds good, right? Yeah, sounds really good. That screwdriver gonna work? Yep. Maybe. I've got a tool for doing that. For adjusting that which is flexible and has a socket that just fits those. Oh yeah? Yeah. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> just a second. I am so less stressed right now. Yeah. Try Are it. you? Just a second. You want light go out? What? Did the oil light go out? Yeah. Okay. I think so. Let me see. Uh, I don't have an oil light. I have engine, brake, alternator. Engine is oil light. Alright. Start it. So uh, I hack this up, cut it, and get these two outer pieces. Uh, okay. And so, and then I took a, some, these weren't gonna hold it in right, and so I need like a little bit of a spacer. So I use some old radiator hose. Yeah, I got those old uh, upper and lower radiator hoses. Josh got them for me at a yard sale for a couple bucks. Huge pile, box of them. No idea what they went to, but doing a bunch of derbies at the time, and even anything from like isolators to uh, had to go through the firewall. Needed something to wrap around some gas fuel line or whatever, electronics or whatever to keep it safe. But I mean, isolators, or we've even used it for derby to fit a whatever radiator in a whatever car. So yeah, it's good to keep that that kind of stuff around, and to get it for a couple bucks at yard sale. Of a deal. All right, so. I'm still, I'm still getting some uh, leak out of this side on the exhaust. You're probably not going to see this on the GoPro, but I got a little bit of white smoke still coming out there. And it looked like I had a little bit of water in my oil. So, trying one more Hail Mary before I, before I can go today. Uh, day of the underpower tour. No time like the last minute, so a little, throw a little bars leak. My heater's bypassed, so I don't gotta worry about that. Uh, I gotta make the, get the engine up to operating temperature. So that should be here pretty quick. I didn't let it cool down far enough. Threw a lot of water everywhere, but uh, we're gonna try, let's see here. Gonna let it run for like another half hour, let it idle. Uh, turn it off, let it cool off. Add some fluid, let it cool up all the way this time. Add some fluid and then drive around the block and see if it's still doing the, the leaky. So, all right, see you in 30 minutes. All right, I let it run for 30 minutes. Shut it down, let it cool off. Topped off the water. And now I'm supposed to go for a little cruise. See what it looks like back here. Side. This is weird. Because earlier I was just on that side, so. Alright, I'm gonna go consult the Oracle. Uh, we'll uh, check back in about 15 minutes. Alright, underpower tour fans, good news. The wagon is at least gonna start the journey. Um, did the uh, 
the bars stop leak. I've had good success with bars on Derby Car products before, so threw a can of bars in there. I only lost like that much water after driving around town for a bit, running some errands in it. So yeah, look for her on the Underpower Tour. So uh, at least the first 30 miles, she'll be there for sure. Don't forget to uh, like, share, and subscribe down below. Support us by shopping any of our Amazon affiliate links also below or buy our sweet merch. All right, until next time.